Good morning, friends. Before we start this Mass, just the usual uh, introduction. This Mass is being live-streamed from St. Gerard's Church. We are still maintaining our social distancing, but hopefully the distance now will become less and less. Even for you who are participating from your homes, may this Mass be an opportunity to feel really close to God, our loving Father. So let us start together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today the words came to my mind, I lay down my old flames so that the new fire can come in me. Whether we know it or not, we are still approaching the Feast of Pentecost. We are still preparing ourselves for the Holy Spirit, the biggest gift. So let us ask the Lord that truly, whatever remains in us, whatever we have to lay down, we will do it joyfully and gladly. In the Gospel today, Jesus washes the feet of his loved ones, which is very appropriate for us who gather for the Eucharist. Because this is what Jesus does. He takes whatever we are. He takes our struggles, our doubts, and he transforms everything into joy. So let us pray that that is what will happen during this celebration, even what we call a simple mass without any of the bells and whistles. This is such a special encounter with our God. So let us pray that truly God will take our life and transform it into his life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Let us put in all our intentions, O oh God, you restore human nature to yet greater dignity than at its beginnings. Look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness and in those you have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth. May you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostle. Paul and his friends went by sea from Paphos to Perga in Pamphylia, where John left them to go back to Jerusalem. The others carried on from Perga till they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to synagogue on the suburb and took their seats. After the lessons from the law and the prophets had been read, the presidents of the synagogue sent them a message. Brothers, if you would like to address some words of encouragement to the congregation, please do so. Paul stood up, held up a hand for silence and began to speak. Men of Israel, and fearers of God, listen. The God of our nation, Israel, chose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then by divine power, he led them out and for about 40 years took care of them in the wilderness. When he had des destroyed seven nations in Canaan, he put them in possession of their land for about 450 years. 
After this, he gave them judges, down from the prophet Samuel. Then they demanded a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. After forty years, he deposed him and made David their king, of whom he approved in these words. I have selected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will carry out my whole purpose. To keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus, a savior whose coming was heralded by John when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be. That one is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your truth. On this I am sure, <laughs> that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. Forever, Forever I, will I will sing the goodness, goodness of, of the Lord. Lord. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. Forever, Forever I, I will sing, sing the goodness, goodness of, of the Lord. Lord. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, the rock who saves me. Forever, Forever I, I will sing, sing the, the goodness, goodness of, of the Lord. Lord. Please rise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ is risen and makes all things new. He has shown pity to all <coughs> mankind. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, no servant is greater than his master. No messenger is greater than the man who sent him. Now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. I am not speaking about all of you, for I know the ones I have chosen. But what scripture says must be fulfilled. Someone who shares my table rebels against me. I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I send welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Be 
one thing I like about our church is the crucifix. You cannot see it because we had to trim the picture. But one thing I like about it is that the wound on the side is very visible because Jesus is a bit pale. So at least we can see. I remember when one of the new churches in Malta was being dedicated, the parish priest commissioned a life-size crucifix. So it's the prominent thing in the church. And he asked one of the leading uh, uh, what, what do you, sculptors to, to make it. And when it was finished, he told him, where is the wound? There was no wound. And he told him, but that would ruin the aesthetic. I told him, no, no, please. So he had to take it back to the studio and he had to include, and probably in, in that uh, sculptor's mind, the thing was Jesus is in agony. I mean, Jesus with, without the wound means he is still alive. He is still in agony. Sometimes our life can feel like that. We are in agony. Even Paul speaks about it. The agony, the, the groaning even of the body of Christ. Why? Because we have still yet to reach, even we know that our faith is based on the words of Christ, it is finished. So important words, that the work is finished. Our Christ died and was raised again to life. That is where all our strength, even uh, symbol not symbolically, I mean it's the teaching of the church, from the wound of Christ's side flows the life of the church. The sacraments, even what we read in the gospel today, it's something that is ongoing, something that is being handed across the generations, which is so beautiful, knowing that there is a direct line going back to that very wound of the, of the side of Christ. But it's interesting also when Paul makes a very good summary of the history of Israel, and he doesn't skim over any difficult parts or rough parts. Because even while we are in this so-called agony, this is so important. This is not something about aesthetic. Sometimes we would like the church to be beautiful with all the wrinkles, even ourselves, our spiritual life. We would like it to be impeccable, so that what can be seen is something beautiful, something beautiful to behold. And we can say, yes, that is for God's glory. But all the inner workings, what is going on inside, what is known only to you and to God, isn't that important? What do we say about that? In giving that summary, Paul does not iron out any of the rough spots. Because all of that history is taken. Then he says very simply, John the Baptist came and proclaimed a, a, a baptism of repentance. And that very beautiful word, repentance, it just doesn't mean just a brushing off the dust and trying to continue your journey. It means being open to a new understanding. So let us pray, yes, that truly, even as we participate in this Mass, which is a direct link to the wound on Christ's, of Christ's side, from where the Spirit even was released, let us truly believe that Christ is doing this for us, for you, for me. Because Christ knows what is going on in our life, even from the inside. He knows even those areas we try to hide sometimes, those areas where we still need to grow, to align ourselves. And Jesus doesn't eh, make all the things vanish. Today we can doctor our pictures on the computer to make everything look beautiful and nice. This is a journey. And God promises to walk with us every step of the way. And he also promises us in today's gospel, happiness will be yours. Yes, even though we look at ourselves and see our many failings, we are still called to serve one another. The Father is honored with this, Jesus tells us, when you serve. When we serve in his name, the Father is honored. And when the Father is joyful, that joy will be ours as well. So let us continue praying that we can truly believe even the simple things that God speaks to us, 
perhaps even in an unexpected moment of the day, that these will truly remind us that we are not only in, in agony, but that this is a journey which will end in glory, and that that glory is already ours even while we live here and now. Let us continue praying even for people who are alone, who are still in solitude, who are still fearful, people who maybe in some countries are being called back to work and they cannot refuse, people who are still bearing the agony of confusion in their lives, that truly they will find comfort and that they will have this experience of repentance, of being open to new possibilities, to a new understanding. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us stand. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for renewing us with your blessing every morning, every day, every moment of the day. Lord, as we trust in you, knowing that you are our only hope, you are our life. Lord, we offer our petitions, our desires, that in you everything may be brought to completion. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord, hear our prayer.
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, even as today we continue to pray for you to show us new ways how to evangelize, we thank you for putting this call into our hearts. We offer it to you because every call comes from you and returns to you. Lord, inspire us so that our deeds and actions can truly bear fruit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, as we offer up this prayer together with the gifts of bread and wine, may your holy touch transform them and make them abundant through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with your angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, with Saint Gerard and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Lifting up grateful hearts, let us pray with the words Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
even as we pray this prayer of spiritual communion, let us very simply bring to mind any rough spots in our life. Let us imagine that we are presenting God with our lifeline, with our life story, and God doesn't only pick and choose the beautiful parts, and he doesn't magically transform it into a beautiful picture, but he takes our life, he takes your life, my life, as it is, and he breathes new life over it. Let us ask the Lord, Lord, breathe new life over my life. Breathe your spirit now upon me. Jesus, my Lord, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come nevertheless and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, make it like your own. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself completely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives.